the sin nature can erupt itself and manifest itself in different ways. What do I mean? There are what the Bible calls in 2 Corinthians 7, 1, the sins of the flesh and the sins of the spirit. There are two categories. And we might look at some that are more acceptable sins and some that are unacceptable. But the Bible is very clear that they come from the same place. You remember the story of the prodigal son and the elder brother. The prodigal son, he rebelled against his father. He went to a far off land. He, he got involved in riotous living with prostitutes and all the rest. And he gave full vent to his flesh. And his sin was so obvious. And he came back as a prodigal son to his father, begging for forgiveness. But he was a man whose sin was what we would call sins of the flesh. The elder brother stayed home, did all the right things, but the sins of the spirit, jealousy, envy, greed that he had, and he displayed that. So both types are there. And I think we get into very serious trouble when we begin to categorize sin. This is not so bad, this is terrible. Now, the sins of the flesh, the consequences are far greater. No question about it. But in God's sight, the sins of the flesh and the sins of the spirit are really not that different. But we see the sins of the flesh, they become obvious, the consequences are, are there. And so we tend to make a list. These sins are unacceptable. These are really terrible. These are we tolerate. We don't make an issue out of gossip and jealousy and envy. And I've told people, I said, if you want to make a list, make sure you use God's list. And here's a couple of examples. In Proverbs 6, verses 16 through 19, it says, there are six things the Lord hates. Seven are an abomination to him. What are they? Did you understand that? Six he hates, seven are an abomination to God. Here they are. Haughty eyes. You ever heard anybody being disciplined in church for having haughty eyes? For just being proud and arrogant? A lying tongue. Hands that shed innocent blood. All over that one. A heart that devises wicked schemes. Feet that are quick to rush into evil. A false witness who pours out lies. And a man who stirs up dissension among the brothers. God hates those. And that's God's list, not man's list. Now there are many others, but that gives you an idea. Because again in this list, you have sins of the flesh and sins of the spirit. But most of them in the list that God hates are sins of the spirit. Another list in Galatians 5. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, now watch this, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, and orgies, and the like. You see? Sins of the flesh and sins of the spirit are all here. He said these are the obvious ones. So keep that in mind as we move through these lectures. Because immediately when we talk about somebody that falls, we usually talk about sexual immorality, adultery, pornography, homosexuality, uh, we said, boy, he fell. Well, what did he do? He left his wife, or he got involved in pornography, or he was going to prostitutes. And those are the ones that get our attention, and those are the ones that create the scandals. And they are bad. I'm not minimizing those uh, for a minute. And the consequences of those are terrible, and they go on for years. But by making just that our focus, we then 
tend to make the other sins a little more acceptable. The gossip, the envy, the jealousy, those that sow seed of discord among the brethren, but those are the ones God says, I hate, and they're all the same. And we, we need to be careful of that. So with that as a background, let me talk uh, now about anatomy, what I use as an anatomy of a fall, kind of dissecting a fall of someone. How did it happen? We know what the enemies are, the flesh, the world, the devil. We know the categories of sins, sins of the flesh, sins of the spirit. But no one wakes up one day and uh, just has a major fall. One man has said, a collapse in the Christian life is never the result of a sudden blowout, but always of a slow leak, little compromises. I have a friend, a wonderful friend, one of my best friends, who went through a horrible fall. And this man, again, was walking with the Lord. He was riding high. God was using him. Uh, Jeff, my friend, uh, was a school teacher. He was a football player. Uh, and he started an organization because he had a son that was diagnosed as, a, as an infant with leukemia. He had no medical insurance. Students of the school where he was teaching raised over $200,000 to pay medical bills for him. Out of that, he and his wife formed an organization called Sparrow Clubs. And what they would do is they would encourage junior high and high school kids to find a kid in the school who had some real medical needs or disabilities, they would adopt that kid, that would be their little sparrow. They would help raise money, they would minister to the family, they would take care of this little kid. And Jeff wrote a wonderful book about this organization. And um, it became a bestseller, they've made movies on it, videotapes, and Jeff was married to a wonderful lady five kids of their own, and this ministry became a nationwide ministry. And Jeff wrote three different books, and he was traveling all over the United States, uh, speaking, representing this ministry, and God poured out his blessing on it. It was wonderful to see, and I would see Jeff occasionally and just loved him because he was just such an outgoing man, so on fire for God, and so passionate about what he was doing. Well, Jeff got caught up in his ministry, got stressed out, and then finances became a real issue. People that had committed to supporting the ministry weren't able to fulfill their commitments, and so money got tighter and tighter and tighter in the ministry. Jeff cut his salary, he tried to cut some staff. He tried to work harder, make it happen. And uh, nothing was working for him. And it just kept getting more stressful all the time. And one day, Jeff went to a meeting, a business meeting. And at the meeting, they were serving alcohol, wine. And Jeff, in college, when he was in college 20 years earlier, he had done some drinking, like a lot of college students. But he hadn't touched a drop of alcohol for 20 years. He had a little glass of wine. It made him feel a little better. And then he, uh, as stress built, he would have a little more and a little more. He could still function, carry on his responsibilities. People didn't know. But finances kept getting tighter. And as they got tighter, he began to drink more and more and more. And then finally, uh, they foreclosed on his house. He had to declare bankruptcy, and he really began to drink heavily then. And he was dismissed from his ministry, and he went to a treatment center. And uh, in the treatment center, Jeff uh, went through a horrible time of, of, of treatment, trying to get free of uh, alcohol. But he was out for a short period of time and he relapsed again. 
Well, his wife left him, his five kids left him, he lost the house, he went bankrupt. And Jeff hit the streets. He had no place to go. And he ended up for two years as a homeless bum. Very, very sad. Here was a man, powerfully, mildly used of God. What happened? Well, the devil found an opening. The world system with the, with the alcohol was there. His flesh was being satisfied, medicated through that. All of that converged. It was slow. It was slow, but he fell. And that story could be told time and time again of failure. Different ways, like I say, somebody doesn't wake up one morning and have a big fall. There's always a slow leak, something going on there that, that causes it. But here's the message. It could happen to any of us. Uh, it's happened to the, some of the greatest men that I know, some of the most godly. Take, for example, David, a man after God's own heart. David broke four of the last five of the Ten Commandments. He coveted, he stole, he murdered, he committed adultery. A man after God's own heart. How does that happen? Some of the same ways that I, I've been describing here. But here's the message. Failure never has to be final for anybody. Never. There is a way to be restored. And the road to restoration involves brokenness. And that's what God does, is he breaks us so that he can restore us. And that's what happened to Jeff. We strive to serve the contemporary Christian community with a variety of Christian educational and evangelistic resources. To see TVS Seminary's database, please visit tvsseminary.com.